So I will start with the certifications today, what type of certifications uh, Salesforce provides and uh, what is the pattern of those certificates, how many questions, uh, what type of questions, and also how to register for the exam, what is the fees of the exam, all of that details we are going to discuss today in the first half. And then in the second half, I will walk you through with the UI of Salesforce, how it looks, and uh, we'll just make ourselves comfortable today with Salesforce UI. So here is the list. Uh, there are total 37 Salesforce certifications, which is available in 2022. And this is the total list. I'll provide you this link, which you can refer also for your future reference and save it if you want to do any certificate. So I'll start with Salesforce admin. So in Salesforce admin, you have three certificates, which you see here. Salesforce administrator, advanced administrator, and platform app builder, okay? This is the basic certificate, which anyone can clear. There, is, there are no prerequisites for uh, this certificate. So this is the basic one, admin, and then you have the higher level of these certificates. These certificates are considered under Salesforce admin. And this certificate is the basic or entry level certificate, you can say. And most of the country, uh, most of the companies, they demand for any of these certificates. 80% of the company, I can say that they will ask you to uh, get these certifications. And there are a few companies also who are providing the certificates also. And if you talk about the costing of uh, these certificates, it is $200. And uh, I'll tell you how to register for the exam and how to check the fees because it's difficult, right, to remember the fees for each and every certificate. So there is a certified website which you have to save and uh, you have to create your profile on that certificate certification website also if you want to do any certification. On that, you will get the list of certificates as well as the pricing and when to schedule exam, whether you want to give offline at any centers or if you want to give exam online at, from your home, you can do that as well. So in developer also, we have uh, PD1. This is known as PD1. You must have seen this uh, a lot of times on LinkedIn and other pl platforms also. They mentioned this certificate for development where the development and coding is involved in your job profile. PD1 is something which they ask for, and it's an add-on if you have the certification. And for some companies, they have it mandatory also. So this is PD1, this is PD2, and this is B2C Commerce Developer. These are the certificates which is involved in Salesforce Developer. Right, and then you have categories like admin certifications, developer certifications, consultant, architect, marketer, and designer. These are the level of certifications. And then below that, you have these categories where you have these certificates. So if you want to talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the benefit of these certifications and how to choose the best one, then it's all uh up to you because you have to upgrade yourself the, these certifications will upgrade your profile highlight your profile and these certificates will be a add-on for you so you can start with the basic admin certification once you have that then you can you know based on your interest whatever profile you want to choose for your career based on that you can choose the certificate and clear it if you think after one year or two years of experience, you have the basic certificates of uh, Salesforce admin, and now you want to become a consultant. So you can go for sales cloud consultant or service cloud consultant. Based on your interest, you can choose any of the certificates. All these certificates uh, carry the same weightage. It's not like that, that uh, this sales cloud consultant certificate is uh, carry more weightage as compared to administrator certificate. It's not like that. Any certification of Salesforce carries the same weightage and it will give you an add-on in your resume. Let's talk about the pattern of these uh, certifications, what type of questions 
are uh, involved in these certifications. There are 65 questions, um, which are multiple choice questions, which are included in any of the certifications. And uh, the passing percentages, it varies from certificate to certificate, actually. So we cannot uh, choose the fixed percentage or passing percentage on each and every certificate. It varies. I'll tell you the place where you can check everything about those certificates also. And whoever wants to clear any of these certifications can get in touch with me personally because I can provide you dumps and all also for the certification. Um, so right nowadays, honestly, clearing certification is not a big thing because there are dumps easily available in the market and uh, you can just go through the dumps and clear the certification. But it definitely gives you an add-on if you know the concepts of Salesforce and you have the certification, then there will be high probability and high chances of you getting the job. Now, let me show you the website where you can get all the details of the certification, the costing, and how to register for an exam. It is webassessor.salesforce.com. I'll just type in here. This is the page where you have to log in. You can choose any of the domain here, certification training. Just a minute. This is not the right one, I guess. Uh, Purva, please check uh, if uh, uh, you are connected to the VPN. So if you are connected to the VPN, then disconnect it, then uh, try to refresh the page. Okay, but this is actually taking me to the wrong uh, website. Yeah, Maybe yeah. this is now it. That's not the right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so actually, I was incorrectly okay so this is the correct website sorry i was actually uh, entering the incorrect spelling so this is the right one i'll just post it on the chat so you guys can also save this link in case you want to apply for any certification this is the website where you will have to create your account I already have the account, so I'll just show you. Okay, is my screen visible now? Yes. 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 So this is the website after you create your account in Salesforce. This is how it looks, where you will be able to see all the certificates here. You just have to click on register for an exam, the third tab. And here you will be able to see all the exams which we discussed. Right, administrator exams, if you open, you will see the same exams here, Salesforce Certified Administrator, Certified Advanced Administrator, Certified Business Analyst, all of these exams, you will see it here. Yeah, if you just click on it, it will give you the costing of these exams. Uh, if it's $200, you just have to click on register and register it. Same with other exams also. Okay, mostly it's $200 only for maximum of the certification, but for some of them, it may vary. So it's better to check the costing before you apply for it. Okay, and once you clear your certification, if you go to my assessment, you will be able to see all your 
certifications here. These are the ones which I've done, so it is showing here. Okay. So any questions till this part? Yeah, uh, Purva, then what is the use of getting the badges in Trailhead? Is so that totally, not... yeah, yeah, that's totally different. Certification is something which you will get directly from Salesforce. Badges is something where you are showing that you have gained some knowledge in Salesforce on Trailhead. You can mention the Trailhead link in your resume and that will, uh, you know, show an add-on. But certification is totally different. That is something that you have a certificate in Salesforce. Badges is optional, totally optional. Even if you don't do it, doesn't matter. I mean, I haven't touched my Trailhead profile at all since I've been working in with Salesforce industry since a long time. So oh, the thing is, uh, yeah, here today, here you can see in Trailhead credentials there is mm -hmm. a certificate or maintaining maintain certificate kind of so this is not in, not our use this is this is the same these are the same certificates which you will see on your trailhead so yesterday which i showed you right trailhead yeah. certificate it's the same thing whatever okay. certifications you will see it here or you will do it from here it will show you under your trailhead these are all linked your web SSO your trailhead and your salesforce these are all linked together okay oh that will get expired also no so yes. we have to give the exam every year for that correct so correct. every year we have to pay for it or uh, no it's, it's... no there is no fee for maintenance exam it's free you have to pay one time okay, okay. just to maintain it expired. i have to give the exam like yes just every to maintain year. it yes and if the certificate gets expired, then you have to give the exam again with the same cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So just don't do the same mistake which I have done. I did not maintain it, so I lost them all. But I've gained experience and no one asked me now for certificates. But yeah, it's good to maintain them all. Okay. And any more questions related to certifications? No, Purva. Okay. Uh, certificate will be mandatory, right? Like for entering. No, no, it's not mandatory. But uh, I can say there are companies for which it is mandatory. It totally depends on company to company. If they have a requirement of that certification, then it will be mandatory only for that particular company. But it will not be mandatory for all the companies. It's totally the company's decision. Okay. Okay, so I will move on now. Let's get started with the lesson one, getting around the app. Today we'll try to understand the Salesforce application, how it works, what exactly is there in Salesforce app, okay? So first thing is, what is an object in Salesforce? Okay, so just like you have worked in Excel files, you see rows and columns, same way you have objects in Salesforce. Objects are the places where you will store the data. Till now, you know that Salesforce is used to capture and store the customer data or any type of data you can store in Salesforce, correct? Now, where will you store that data? That place is known as objects. And how it is stored, it's in the form of the table only. Like the object is a table. And then the columns which you see here are known as the field, like account ID, account name, billing city. These things are known as fields. And whatever accounts or whatever data you create in Salesforce are known as records. Okay, we'll talk more about it in detail also. But just a high level information about object is that it's a table of data. Now we have some standard objects in Salesforce. So let's talk about that. Um, 
and why we have objects in salesforce is because when you are saying that you are storing the data so of course you are not storing the data only in one place when you are using salesforce for some business there will be different types of uh, data which you will be storing like sometimes you will store customer data their first name last name email address and all sometimes you will use salesforce to store the account information the company details of the prospects or if it's a healthcare industry you may use salesforce to store the patient data doctor data and all of that so for that you have to have some place in salesforce that are considered as objects in salesforce so we'll start with account all of these objects which you see here are known as standard objects Give me one minute, guys. Please. Okay. So we were talking about standard objects. These are. the standard object in salesforce let's start with account okay so account means um let's take an example in that example we will include all of the objects so it will help you understand better for example i have a factory and i am selling biscuits in my factory okay so that's my business where i'm selling biscuits now how will i start selling biscuits i will start from the marketing first i will arrange some campaigns i will organize some of the campaigns some exhibitions where i will be um showcasing my uh, biscuits or products whatever i have right there will be different types of uh, varieties which i will be preparing in my factory so i will ask my colleagues to showcase my products at some exhibitions or at some campaigns that information i will store under campaign so it starts from campaign first then after that campaign is launched for example i have stored the campaign information that i have launched uh, i've organized an exhibition at phoenix mall or at some hotel or somewhere and i will store that information under campaign in salesforce now after that next thing will come as prospects those are known as lead a prospect or potential opportunity that means people will come to our booth ex exhibitions or our stalls and they will try to inquire what type of uh, cookies or biscuits you are selling uh, how many quantities you can give us and there may be people from like reliance dmart and other uh, supermarkets also not only customers who will be purchasing biscuits but these are the distributors also which may inquire about purchasing large number of quantities for their own business at that point what you will do you will store their information somewhere maybe you will write down their names their details their requirements in an excel file or in a copy or a register because at that point you will not have time to maintain the data in salesforce but that's how you will just make a note of it and then after that you will be able to store that information in salesforce later okay so that information that prospect details who has shown interest in your product are known as leads in salesforce leads can be uh, of different ways i mean there are different ways through which the leads can be stored in salesforce the one example which i told you if you have arranged the campaign and they are trying to inquire about your products there there may be other marketing techniques also which you will do to sell your biscuits like you will um, have some ads on google they may try to inquire on that ad so you will put up a form on online on the website so that you get those details also in salesforce then on linkedin you may promote your biscuits your uh, factory that we are preparing these many 
things in a factory let us know if you are interested people may contact you on linkedin also those potential customers will also be stored in the form of lead in salesforce so this is how you store the data under the respective object now after the lead has shown you interest what you will do and first of all who will store that information in salesforce that will be users for example if i have created salesforce account you guys have created your salesforce account yesterday we all are users in salesforce because we all are using salesforce so as a user i will be creating leads in salesforce which i got from that particular campaign after that the second thing which i will be doing is i will be calling them i will be sending them emails hey you showed the interest at the campaign that day please let us know how many quantities you want or let us know your requirement you will call them if they say yes that please book uh, these much biscuits for our store and uh, just send it to us at our address and whatever then you will follow further process you will convert the lead into account contact and opportunity this is the standard process of salesforce that lead is converted into account contact and opportunity why i'll tell you because on lead level the work is only to gain the customer's interest just a yes or no we want from them only the prospect level information is stored in the form of lead that is the basic definition of lead right and then when it becomes account contact and opportunity the sales process begins that means why do we capture their account information is to make sure that we know um which companies we are having a business with right so so that we can improve our business next year we can plan some target that yes there are reliance smart d mart and other supermarkets who has purchased biscuits this year but next year maybe they are not showing interest so on account level you will be able to track that information in salesforce that these are the people from this particular company or brand they visited a booth last year but this year there is no revenue generated from them so you will follow up with them that's why you store their account information and lead will be the name of that particular person who has contacted let's say from reliance someone was trying to inquire about your biscuit so they will have some name person let's say pura shrivastava from reliance was trying to inquire about your product at your booth so you will store pura shrivastava in the form of lead in salesforce and my company will be my account will be reliance because i belong to reliance okay and then after the lead is converted my name will become as a contact in salesforce because i will be the primary contact who will be dealing with you and the uh, customer then on opportunity why we create opportunity it is the deal which will happen between you and the customer you will store all of your product information on the opportunity level like what type of biscuits they are actually purchasing from you how many quantity how much discount you have applied all of that calculations will happen on opportunity level so that is why we create account contact and opportunity after the lead conversion so these are the standard objects in salesforce now cases cases is the final stage these are the tickets which we raise like if we have any concern with ola support or if we have shopped something from uh, flipkart or mintra then we raise complaints right those complaints are captured in the form of cases in salesforce so in our example if we have sold biscuits to some of our customers and if they are not happy with the product this time not with the taste or with the flavors which we have offered they have some complaints which they want to raise then we will give them platform to raise the tickets with us and those will be considered as cases in salesforce so now i will show you in salesforce how the ui looks whatever we have uh, seen till now it is the definition of these objects now i'll show you live how these objects look in salesforce and how will you store the data in salesforce
So as soon as you log into Salesforce, you will see this kind of UI. This is known as the Lightning version of Salesforce. Earlier there was Classic version of Salesforce. There are two UI of Salesforce: Classic and Lightning. Classic version was the old one. I'll show you that also. The data is the same in both the UIs. It's just that the look and feel is the different. Is user interface. UI is user interface. That means how the page looks that is known as the user interface, what you're using. So I'll switch to Salesforce Classic. So this was the earlier user interface of Salesforce, where you have opportunities, contacts, leads, accounts, which I was talking about. This was the older version. And now Lightning Experience is the latest user interface of Salesforce. So this is how the lead contact and opportunity looks like the object which I just told you. If you go to lead, the first step as per our example, we will create a lead in the system. This is how you create a lead. You just click on lead, click on new and you enter the details. Let's say there was a prospect of my name. I'll take down the phone number of that person. Company is Reliance. All of these are known as fields in Salesforce. Then we have lead source, how the lead has come in Salesforce through website or if someone has tried to inquire about the product over the phone or if it's a, through a partner, if it's a purchase list, paid media, if it's a Google search. There are lots of lead sources which vary from company to company what information they want to enter here and then you will have to choose it accordingly. Then we have industry. You can choose the industry of that particular company. This helps you to track the performance that which industry is doing good with your business. So let's say Reliance belongs to food and beverages. So I will choose food and beverages as industry. Then all of these fields, whatever you see with the red asterisk sign here are the mandatory fields. That means if you don't enter anything and leave it blank and try to save this, then it will give you an error. Please review the following fields company complete this field. So that means these information you cannot skip. You have to have the value in these fields. So this is how you create. You can skip all of these fields if, because it's not mandatory. So you can leave them. If you want to enter anything, you can just enter and just click on save. So this is how you create a lead in Salesforce. Okay. Now, before I create more records and walk you through, I will first make you understand the features which you see on this page. Ma'am, I have a question, ma'am. Yes, I have. Uh, ma'am, is uh, ma'am, uh, can there be do? Duplicate data in Salesforce uh, means in Salesforce can it be means uh, do it show or it does not show which one ma'am uh, is duplicate data duplicate allowed? data yes yes duplicate data is allowed in Salesforce if you want to create uh, anything duplicate so there are different uh, platforms uh, or there there are different tools through which you will be able to. Uh, create. If you are creating the lead manually, which I just created, it will allow yes, you to duplicate. And there are duplicate yes. rules in place, automation, which you can write in the background that duplicate leads should not be allowed. Then it will not allow you. Otherwise, it is allowed. You can push duplicate. Yes. Means okay. the number can be uh, same also. Yes, it can be same. 
So you have okay, to write a rule from the back end in order to avoid that if you want to avoid. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Got it, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is the navigation in Lightning. This particular nine dot which you see on the left right corner, sorry, left corner is known as App Launcher, where you see all of the apps. The sales which you see here is the app in sales course. Then all of these which you see here are known as the objects or the tabs. This is your home page. This is your search where you can search for any record. This is your favorite. If you want to mark any record as favorite, you can simply mark it here. Whenever you click on any records, like they have clicked on opportunity here, the opportunity is showing here. This is known as the path, the opportunity stages basically. And then whenever you click on any record, you have to go to details if you want to see all the fields of that particular record. So let's go back to Salesforce now. So this is App Launcher. If you click on the App Launcher, you will see all the apps here, marketing. So app is nothing but the collection of objects. Like if I go to marketing, I will see these objects here. If I go to service, I will see different objects here. Right, I will see different. That means the uh, data types which you uh, told yesterday. Yes. Uh, what is Dreamforce? Dreamforce. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Dreamforce is the program of uh, Salesforce, which happens every year. And uh, only the experts are uh, invited to Dreamforce. There are lots of uh, prerequisites to be a part of Dreamforce. It's a kind okay. of a program which is launched, a success party, you can say. Uh, which is launched every year where they launch some new features in Salesforce and have some speakers explaining the new features and this is how it happens. Okay. And App Exchange? Uh... App Exchange is the platform where you can download some apps uh, in Salesforce. Like you have uh, App Store in your mobile and Google Play Store where you yeah. download some applications in your mobile phone. Same okay. way in Salesforce, there are packages which you can install through that App Exchange Forum. We'll cover that also. It's the second last topic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So after you create the lead, this is the one which I have created. And once you create the lead, you will not see the data because this is the drop down where you have to click and you have to select the right option. If you see recently viewed, that means the leads on which I have clicked recently, only those leads will show. You will not show anything because you have not clicked on any of the record yet. But if you click on this drop down, you have to select all open leads. Then you will be able to see all this sample data which I'm seeing. All of your developer editions are uh, filled with sample data, which you can explore and see as per your convenience. There is no harm in exploring your Salesforce. You can make the mess out of it. Nobody is going to say anything, but make sure you explore more and more options in Salesforce. Okay. So this is how you go to a record, then you go to details, then you go to all the fields and you see the details, this is how you store the information of your prospect for leads or your customers, okay? Now I will talk about some uh, relations here, like there are objects related to each other. So account has a relation between with contact, opportunity and cases. That means on account level, you will store the contact information. For example, this one which I have created here, this name and this company, once I convert this lead 
this will become an account and it will show you under account as reliance and this name will show you under contact because it will become a contact okay so that means under an account you will have same account same contact and same opportunity and you may have if the customer is if this particular customer is raising a case that will also be captured under account so that means account has a relation between with contact and opportunities and cases so i'll now convert this lead in order to convert this you just have to go to this arrow here and click on convert click on convert so if it's duplicate it will show you the option here whether if you want to choose it from existing now you will see your lead has been converted and you will see an account has been created a contact has been created and an opportunity has been created i'll just close this page and i will go to accounts now and you will see reliance has been created as an account now it will show you under accounts and if you go to related you will see a contact also with my name here and you will see there is one opportunity also for reliance which is created here so this is how the objects are linked with each other in salesforce and this is the platform which is used to store the data now i would request you all to log in to your systems and just log in to salesforce create some leads and explore the features let's make yourself comfortable with the interface of salesforce so that you will be able to pick up the topics fast from monday so can all of you please log into salesforce quickly and create one one lead and if anyone faces any issues let me know Uh, Purva, can you please uh, send that link once? Sorry, can you repeat? Um, that link. Okay. I'm not okay. getting it. Okay, okay. I'll just post it on the chat. It's login. Salesforce. Com. This is the link which you have to copy in order to log in to Salesforce. Login. Salesforce. Com. Hello, Purva. Yes, Anuradha. Uh, yeah, uh, we need to go to app launcher and then from there uh, marketing and then marketing and then just lead right. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Okay. It's done. Done. Yes. Okay. Great. Everyone, are we all able to create the lead?
purva for lead status we need to give it like open not contact open or not contact yeah yeah that's fine Yeah, done. Done. Okay. I'm created. Created. Hello. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, ma'am. Um, ma'am, we have to do in. Sorry, your voice is breaking. Ma'am, uh, we have to create the lead in marketing, right? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, ma'am. Got it. Done, ma'am. Okay. Okay, great. So I hope everyone was able to create the lead because that is the first step. If you are comfortable with creating the records, that means you will be able to pick up the things fast. Okay, who has sent the screenshot? Great, you have converted the lead also. Yes, Aditya. Aditya, okay, great. So, have you all converted the lead also, or only created? Ma'am, just create, created just, a lead. Just okay, created. okay. Now, now convert it also. So, I'll repeat in order to show it. Sure, sure, sure. I'm showing it. So, you have to go back to the lead. Okay and pick up the lead which you created click on it and then under this arrow you have to select convert and then click on convert again and lead will be converted and it will show you this page here what is chatter We'll talk about it. It's the uh, communication platform of Salesforce. We'll learn okay. that. It's the topic for Monday. And uh, I have created a uh, sandbox mail. So is it okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. See, whatever you have done till now, that's absolutely fine. Anyways, all the topics we will be covering from scratch. Okay. No, yeah. I'm just asking, what is sandbox? So sandbox is the replica of production environment but this developer edition which we are doing is uh, already a test environment so where you have created the sandbox we don't have sandbox in developer edition uh, uh, i have created my mail account so which is called sandbox aditya god at the rate sandbox something okay uh, but is this your email address? Yes. Okay. In general, I asking you, uh, not a part of lead. Generally, sandbox is totally different thing. What you are saying is totally different. Sandbox mm -hmm. is totally different thing altogether. So where, where you see sandbox, uh, my username is Aditya God at the salesforce.sandbox.com. So, uh, so uh, how how have you created your developer edition? You have created it yesterday with my link or it is created yeah, already? Uh, I have just searched at a Google uh, Salesforce developer login, then sign up. Then. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can show me once the session is over. I'll just take a look. Okay, what account you have created? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh, so everyone, uh, yes, another. Yeah. Like, uh, if we want to edit our some information from the uh, like the recent mm -hmm. uh, lead, uh, so what can we do? Like, yes. So you just have to pick up the lead, and there are two options. If you want to edit it, you will see this pencil icon against every yeah. field. You yeah. just have to click on it and edit the value and click on. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to edit anything. 
But if I leave that, they converted my leader. Then my employer is converted. Sorry, one by one, please. I'm not able to hear anything. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Anuradha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In uh, like I have created a lead and I have converted also, but mm -hmm. in lead section, no, I'm not seeing like I'm seeing the uh, picture over here, right? In yours, uh, you will in... not see it. Okay, okay. Once the lead is converted, this is natural. Now it has become an account contact and opportunity. That means the lead yeah. does not exist now. Okay. 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 Yeah. So if you want to see that lead, you have to go to contact now, and Con you will see it. Yeah. And yes. Contact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the next task for all of you is to search for account. Now you will not see account as I am seeing here because I have added that, and uh, you guys will see account. Just go to this app launcher and search for account and click on accounts from here. Then go to this drop down here. Go to all accounts. and see if you are able to see the account which you have just created by converting your lead yes we can see you can see uh, okay i'm um, can you repeat again ma okay so you have to go to this app launcher here and search for account then go to accounts from here then in this drop down select all accounts Yes, ma'am. We can Done. see, ma'am, which is created by a CS man. Okay, okay, that's great. You guys are doing really great. Anyone who is not able to do it, please feel free to ask. We all are here on this. We should be all on the same page. If you will not ask me right now, then you will not be able to pick up the topic. Next topic, right? So. i assume everybody is able to do the same thing which we have done create lead and convert it yes. to account contact yes, and yes. opportunity yes, yes yes okay that's great so if we don't have any questions we can wrap up the session for today because we don't have time for the new topic now and uh, i will start the new topic from monday from monday we will start the full fledged technical training because i see this batch is quite intelligent so you guys are picking up things very fast otherwise one week's time i give every batch some time to get themselves comfortable with the ui but you guys are picking up very fast so we'll start the full blast technical training on from monday yeah sure fine mm -hmm. any questions anybody has no so far okay okay no, great Great. Have a nice weekend, all of you. See you all on Monday. Bye bye. Yeah, you too. Uh, bye bye. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. I have some. Hi, ma'am. Yes. Um, ma'am, can we create our own leads, ma'am? Yes, of course, guys. Please. I mean, sir, if we explore. want to practice. Yes, yes. For practice, create more leads, more accounts, more contacts, more opportunities. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Create more leads. No problem at all. Just practice it. Yes, ma'am. I'll practice, ma'am. Okay, okay, great. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. Bye bye. And also, uh, guys, uh, as you know that there is a webinar which I'm conducting for job assistants, right? Tomorrow, so I would request you all to please take out some time and join that webinar uh, because that will be useful for all of you to find out the <coughs> right platform, how to create your. linkedin account how to make it attractive how to make your resume look good so that you will be able to attract more recruiters towards the your profile 
and all of that all of the useful tips i will be sharing tomorrow in the webinar it's free webinar open for all so if you can take out some time tomorrow that will be beneficial for you all okay what is the what time, time it is it's it, it's at uh, it's 10 a.m okay. 10 a.m okay okay yeah i have shared the link i'll share it again on the whatsapp group so no, we got it. No, got it got it got it it's okay we got it okay okay ma'am do we have a recording of this video because i joined late yes yes of course i record every session i'll be sending it on the group you can refer to it later okay okay thank you so much no problem uh, purva like 10 am it's not possible for me to attend actually oh okay the okay, thing is case, uh, yeah yeah my week off is on monday tuesday Oh, okay. So you'll have a working Saturday yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, not a problem. I'll send out the recording, or I'll invite you some other time when I conduct it again, or maybe I'll send recording. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Ah. Ah, Puva, can I share the screen after the session? Yes, yes. You can share it now. I just stop the recording.